All right, so in this video, we're going to look at the probability of getting a type 2 error. We're still specifically looking at normal distributions, as you'll see in this problem, but we're getting a little bit closer to a point where we can start looking at some others. All right, so remember a type 2 error is one where we accept the null hypothesis, though in reality it's not true. Obviously, if we knew it wasn't true, then we would not accept it, but this is just we're going through the significance testing. We accept it. And it turns out that uh, that's not actually true. OK, so let's look at the situation here. where We've got cans of chickpeas labeled at 400 grams. And it's known that the true weight of cans is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 10 grams. So this is good. It tells us it's normally distributed. That'll be helpful. We'll be able to use that as we're working through. A statistician wishes to conduct a test to see if the mean weight of a can is less than 400 grams. He uses a sample of 12 cans and a 2% level of significance. So what we've got here is a normal distribution where we've got 400 grams, right? And he wants to see if the mean is less than 400. Now, if that's the case, then anything out here, or 0 0.02, anything in this region right here would be considered that it's too far away, the null hypothesis is incorrect, and therefore, it really is less than 400 grams. OK? Um, so first, it says find the probability of a type 1 error. Well, the probability of a type 1 error is, of course, that's alpha equals 0 0.02, or 2%, which is the level of significance. Right? That's the probability that we're going to get when we, when we run our test. Right? When we conduct this test, there's a 2% probability that I'm going to get a data point out here. Okay, and even if the, the mean really is 400 grams, there's still a 2% probability that I'm going to get it out here. There's a 98% probability that I'm going to get something within the rest of this region, which then would be enough to accept our null hypothesis, which is, is 400. Okay, so uh, let's go on to letter 2. I, uh, letter A, <laughs> I, I. A type 2 error given the true mean, mu equals 395. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and draw our new mean, which is 395, and the distribution, which looks something like this. OK, really, this should be identical to the previous one, but I'm not a great artist. I can't draw curves very well. And just pretend that those two are the same. Now, if 395 is the real mean, OK, then that's what we need to look at when we're looking at a type 2 error. Because type 2 error says, in reality, the hypothesis is not true. So we need to look at reality. Reality is this. okay? But my test value was this one right here. right? That was the test statistic. Okay, Anything in this region right here, any of these values that I get when I run my test, are going to be accepted for the null hypothesis. I'm going to accept my null hypothesis of 400 because it's within my critical zone. right? So anything that's blue here, any of those measurements, are going to cause me to accept a null hypothesis, which would be a type 2 error. I would be accepting the null hypothesis even though it's not true. The, the mean is really 395, which is less than 400. OK, so what we want to do is find that probability. So in order to find that probability, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our normal distribution. So I'm going to pull up my fancy smancy calculator here. And when it comes up, I'm going to use the actual data. Now I've got my key press history so you can see what I'm writing as we go. OK, so I'm going to go normal distribution because I'm trying to find a probability. So I'm going to go normal CDF. Okay. Now I want to go from this number, whatever it is, all the way up. Now in order to do that, I need to find out what that number is. What is the number at that 2% interval? Okay. So I'm actually not going to do this yet. I need to clear out of that because I need to figure out what number that is. So I'm actually going to have to start with the 400. So let's go inverse norm and we're going to go an area of 2% so I'm looking at the black curve now 0 0.02 and then my mu will be 400 and then the standard deviation was 10 
which needs to be over the square root of 12 because I got 12 cans. All right, and so I end up getting a value of 394.07. So that means that this 2% here is 394. Point, what was it? 07. All right, now that's going to be important now because now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use that same number to find the probability of this right here, which is beta. Okay, so I'm going to find the normal. So I'm going to go second distribution, normal CDF. This time I know I'm going to go from 394.07. all the way up to 1 times 10 to the 99th because I do want to go all the way up this time. Anything I get on this side is going to be in the acceptable region for my hypothesis, which means I'll accept it even though it's wrong. Okay, And then mu, of course, will then be 395. And standard deviation will be the same, so 10 divided by the square root of 12. And we go in and we get 0.626. Now, that then is the area of beta. And so that's the probability of getting a type 2 error. So that would be 0.626. All right. And to finish the question, the question actually then asks, find the power of the test. Now, the power is how strong is your test? Well, the power is just 1 minus beta. Because a higher probability of making a type 2 error means that you have a very weak test. A stronger test will give you a lower beta, which then will be a higher probability of success. So if we do 1 minus beta, then we'll do 1 minus 0.626, and we'll get 0.374 which a 0.374 is a pretty low number, which means this is not a very good test. Okay, To make it bigger, you need to do something, for example, increase the number of cans, uh, change the level of significance. Any of those things can cause an effect to, to beta here. Okay, So what I want you to recognize is that in order to get beta, we actually needed to know the real mean, Okay, which makes it a little difficult to work with. And sometimes the problems will be a little convoluted because you'll say, okay, why the heck am I even doing this if I already have the true mean? And that's a very good question. But <laughs> um, hopefully it'll just help you to uh, get the idea and make the relationships between the true data and the data and, and this distribution, sorry, true distribution relative to the distribution that's part of our, our null hypothesis. Okay, so go ahead, um, stop this video, watch it again if you need to, or just watch the next one in which I'll go through one more example. All right, cheers.